So there's this company called Nintendo, and their whole purpose in life is to build consoles that play games. They went from card maker to lawyer man to inspiring little kids to never touch a keyboard again. This platform is supported by millions, and I'm not going to use it. And instead, I'm going to use this beautiful thing. This is a Wii U, the failed predecessor to the Nintendo Switch. And it has some interesting quirks that we're going to abuse to build the best game of all time. So let's go back to before I started and make a new project. To recap last time, we figured out how to actually make a Wii U game and put it on the console. But what we also did is we figured out how the Wii Remote tracks movement. Assuming that the player has Wii Motion Plus, we know that it can track acceleration and rotation. And we can apply that to our first game, Sword Play. We will take the Wii Remote and then map that to a sword model. And inside of Unity, this will show up as our full sword. But instead of a two-player game, I want to create Speed Slice, the secondary minigame of Swordplay. And while it's mostly just keeping track of score, the hard part is, how do we cut models in half? One idea is to split it into two different models as we make it. The only problem is, is that if we want to cut it at a different angle, we can't. We can only do it the way we did it before. What if there was a way to cut a model in any way you want and be able to build the geometry on the other side? This would mean that we could do this programmatically instead of modeling 1500 different models. My first few attempts to make this work didn't really fix it at all. But I came across an extension to Unity called Easy Slice, and this will let us slice any object in half, and it will let us even apply our own material to the inside. But why was my method so bad? And how does Easy Slice actually work? Let's think of our sword as two dots connected by a line. Between these two dots, we can do a whole ton of math, and mainly, we can know if there's an object between them. In two dimensions, we can actually tell where to cut. And even better, we can even think about how we would generate a shape. But once we get to become a cube, we can't really tell where we're supposed to cut. The edges aren't clear, and we don't really know how big the object is. We also don't really know which way we're cutting. It could be in any number of directions. This is where I went wrong. By subtracting where we were the last frame, we can actually point an arrow in the direction that the sword is moving. This can at least give us an idea of what we need to do in a certain direction, but how do we even figure out where to cut? Instead of an arrow, let's use a plane, and when we use that, we can start to imagine how we would cut a cube in half, and even maybe where we could place some triangles. This is where Easy Slice comes in. I started by taking this idea and writing a script for it. I'll take in an object and estimate the direction that it's going to move. This lets us get that plane or arrow that we wanted from earlier. Then, Easy Slice uses that plane and cuts the object in half, creating its own geometry. In practice, it's still a little wonky, but now I can cut cubes in half however I want. And with some more blood, sweat, and tears, I was able to finish swordplay. With one of my minigames in place, I knew that this was going to completely work, and I decided to throw myself at creating the rest of the game. I decided to start by remaking the main menu from before, and I turned it into this gorgeous masterpiece. Sadly, due to some recent news, I had to remove all references to the Wii or Nintendo, so that's why I don't use the right font, and that's also why I've removed the logos. But we can still make a decent game, if we just don't steal. So with that in mind, let's move on to wakeboarding. Last time, I didn't even get to make the wakeboarding game, so I'm thinking that we should steal the controls from Mario Kart and map them to the Wii Remote. Looking at our Wii Remote again, we can see that this one axis is what we need to turn left and right, and when there's a high value we go left, and when there's a low value we go right. I set up this basic scene and set up some players so that way we can actually see if the movement works. Then, we can transfer the game over to the Wii and see if it worked. Loading into the game was quite quick, but I encountered a problem. 
my player dropout code was reversed for player 1, 2, 3, and 4. I decided to just do a whole overhaul of the game and load it up when I was done. This included me making the player model. Then, off of the original concept, we can create sharks and people to collect. In the end, this one looks bad, but I really like how the plays and how it feels and how the actual controls make it feel like a Mario Kart game, even though it looks pretty terrible. With that said, I now have two fully completed games, unlike before where I barely had one. So next up on the list is going to be Archery. Now, last time, we actually 3D printed a gun and made a whole game around it, and it was actually pretty good. And we're pretty much just going to give it an HD remaster real quick. Give it those same graphics, a skybox, and post-processing, and that way everything's going to be kind of tied together with the other games that we've made so far. I also removed Matt in favor of a free Kenny Assets model, so that way I don't get sued into the ground by Nintendo. That's three out of four games done, and now for probably the most annoying game, Air Sports. Last time, I had the idea of making it four player, like wakeboarding, but I decided to ultimately try and recreate the original Air Sports and have you just crash into buildings or something. So before we go building, let's look at the remote again. We know that the airplane's going to move left, right, forward, backward, and all this good stuff, but we can actually track the rotations and then make the plane move forward based on those rotations. It took many hours to get this to fully work. By banging my head against the desk, I was able to straighten all of this out by doing some fancy division and vector math, and now the game's pretty playable, and you can just kind of crash into a building and it explodes. It's great! Overall, building this game was quite extraordinary. I learned so much about how just different forms of game development work on different platforms. Even though I teach others how to code, I never really looked at it from a making a game standpoint. Only ever really, how can I make data structures work or do my homework faster? Not really actually make something cool. Maybe a game jam, but nothing more than that. And learning about the, the APIs and how the controllers work and all of this crazy stuff working together to make something cool. Now while my game specifically probably isn't the best thing in the world, it does demonstrate that, you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff with not a lot of technology, and maybe even stuff that you already own at home. So this is where you get to go play my game and yell at me about how I'm wrong. Over on itch.io, I have the built version of We Are Resorting to Violence for you to download and play. You can just do it. Then, if you're a more technical person, you can try and go see my code over on GitHub and see how wrong I coded in such a horrible way. And if you're really crazy, you should subscribe, because next time, I want to turn my Wii U into VR goggles and try and make a VR game with a Wii U, which seems pretty impossible. But until next time, good luck, and I will see you later.